In the medical community, there's obviously very well-trained psychiatrists all the way down to GPs who have much less understanding maybe on the mental health side of things. They're still going to potentially hear from some of their patients about intrusive thoughts, maybe even for a brand new mother, say, uh, who might have intrusive thoughts about what if they were to harm their child. And in the past, unfortunately, we know there have been people who've had their kids taken away from them or have been hospitalized because of the fear they would harm. Can you talk a little bit about what the understanding is now from the medical community, how we get now the role of intrusive thoughts? And it's not just postpartum depression, but there's other things going on. There's always uh, going to be a dual prong of making sure everyone is safe and making sure everyone is taken care of. And one of the things that we have to make sure of is that people are safe, but really understanding that the thoughts are not the same thing as the desires. That's where the difference lies. Once we recognize that uh, and just tease that out in our intake, in our chat, uh, we can know right away what the safety issue is. And and most of the time there is not. I couldn't agree more on this idea that a, a thought is not a desire. And just because we think something doesn't mean it's true or, or that it's willful. That's, that's another area. Sometimes people think, I must have this thought because I want it. No, that's that's absolutely not the case whatsoever. Right. The fact that it's displeasurable yeah. is enough for me to know that they're safe.